Welcome to Respiratory HQ. I'm Tanya Peel, and today we are going to talk about compliance and resistance as far as how it is incorporated into mechanical ventilation. So I'm going to ask you if you have not watched the free video, the three steps to success, that you watch the first part of that video. As a matter of fact, I've embedded it in, in this mini course. It's absolutely free, but it introduces this chart where I start separating obstructive versus restrictive diseases and I explain the anatomical alterations of each because it is going to be that chart that I use to give an overview of compliance and resistance. So if you haven't watched it, it's going to be extremely helpful and this video is going to start with the assumption you know what this is and why it is, okay? So let's deal with compliance and resistance as far as what you need to know for the TMC and the uh, clinical simulation exams, okay? So with the chart, we have obstructive diseases, those being our CBABE, and we had said that these, these disorders and diseases were in the airway, right? So we're gonna just write that on the side as a reminder to ourselves. These are classified as airway disorders. And we did discuss how emphysema, even though it does have an alveolar component to it, it affects the smallest of small airways, right? So it's still gonna be classified as an airway disorder. Whereas restrictive disorders, they all compromise, all of these compromise the al alveoli trouble spelling when I'm up here talking, okay? So airway disorders and alveolar disorders or disorders that compromise the alveoli. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line between these and start out here. When you're doing a vent check in clinicals, there are two pressures that we look at or should look at every time you check a vent. And that is the peak inspiratory pressure, I'm gonna call it PIP, for short, or I may just call it peak pressure, and the plateau pressure, and I'm gonna typically refer to that as plateau or plat, okay? So let's just start out with peak inspiratory pressure. And remember when we're dealing with volume ventilation, the machine is gonna push the tidal volume in, and that peak inspiratory pressure is going to vary according to lung compliance and airway resistance, okay? So let's start here. If I say that we have a patient with asthma and they are in the midst of a bronchospasm on a vent, they're having bronchospasms, and I ask you what would happen to the peak inspiratory pressure, you would tell me they increase. And that's absolutely right. I'm gonna say that we have another patient that is on the vent that has a lot of atelectasis and it's, it's gradually getting worse. And I ask you, over time, as that atelectasis is getting worse, what would you expect to happen with the peak inspiratory pressure? And you should tell me it increases. So what I'm saying is if we're only looking at the peak pressure, it really only tells us that there is a problem. It doesn't differentiate where that problem is at, okay? So I've got a line drawn between these two, and I'm gonna put PIP up here peak inspiratory pressure, because peak inspiratory pressure is going to increase with both airway disorders as they worsen and restrictive disorders or alveolar disorders as they worsen. So PIP will increase in both of these. PIP does not do anything for us except to tell us where that there is a problem. It doesn't tell us where the problem is. Okay, so the formula that uses peak inspiratory pressure is the dynamic compliance. So if PIP doesn't tell us anything except a problem, then dynamic compliance doesn't tell us anything except there is a problem. So the formula for dynamic compliance, compliance, DYN is dynamic, is tidal volume divided by PIP minus PEEP. So PIP, if it increases, you know there's a problem. Dynamic compliance, if it decreases, there is a problem. The thing is, you just don't know where, okay? So normal dynamic compliance, just so we know, is 30 to 40 mLs per centimeter of water pressure. 
all right? So in and of itself, dynamic compliance and PIP tell us nothing, okay? What we really need to look at is the plateau pressure. So let's differentiate between the PIP and the plateau pressure. The peak inspiratory pressure is created as the tidal volume moves through the ventilator circuit, through the airway, and stretches open the alveoli. So the peak inspiratory pressure is created under dynamic conditions with movement. So the peak inspiratory pressure and therefore the dynamic compliance tell us about both the airway and the alveoli because it's as air is flowing both through the air airway and stretching open the alveoli. That's why it doesn't tell us where the problem is because it incorporates both places. But once that tidal volume is in the lung, we can initiate an inspiratory hold or an inspiratory pause, depending on which ventilator you're working with. And so when that tidal volume gets in the lungs and you incorporate a breath hold, you don't let the patient exhale that tidal volume. It's truly measuring the alveoli only because flow is no longer moving. It's a static condition, okay? So that pressure that we're starting to look at, this just dealing with the alveoli, is the plateau pressure, all right? So when our plateau pressure is elevated, that specifically tells us that there is a problem in the alveoli, okay? So now we're starting to get somewhere. So the formula that uses the plateau pressure is the static compliance. So static compliance is tidal volume divided by plat minus PEEP. And that value, that normal value, is anywhere from 60 to 100 mLs per centimeter of water pressure. Okay, so now, since we know about the PIPs and we know about the PLAT, let's talk about the relationship between the two, okay? So when the vent pushes the breath into the lungs through the airway into the alveoli and stretches, up the alveo stretches open the alveoli, it will create a peak inspiratory pressure. Watch my hands because this is important. That peak pressure is generated as flow th moves through the alveoli and the volume stretches open the alveoli. Then when we hold that volume in the alveoli with an inspiratory hold, we create a plateau pressure, okay? Now, the law of physics says the PIP must always be higher than the plat. And if it's not, you have done something wrong, okay? PIP must be higher than plat. So we initiate this inspiratory hold on the same exact machine breath so we can get a PIP on that breath and a plat on that breath. Now there is a relationship between the two numbers, okay? So if there is a problem, this tells us about the alveoli, right? If the alveoli are getting stiffer, atelectasis gets worse, then we're gonna see that plateau move up, which also moves up the PIP. So if the problem is in the alveoli, the plateau pressure starts to rise, but so does the PIP, and they rise together, all right? So the PIP and the plat are moving up in the same incremental pace, then the problem is in the alveoli. If the peak inspiratory pressure, catch this terminology, rises independently of the plateau, meaning the plateau is staying the same, nothing's wrong with the alveoli, but the PIP is rising and the plateau staying the same, the difference between the two indicates there's a problem in the airway, okay? So PIP and plat, if they rise together, the problem is in the alveoli. If the PIP rises, but the plat stays the same, the problem is in the airway. So what we're really talking about is the difference between PIP and plat. And if there's a big difference, there's an airway resistance problem. So there's a formula for that. We just said in the airway, it is the difference between the peak inspiratory pressure 
and the plateau pressure. So PIP minus plat divided by flow. This is the set peak flow on the vent and it has to be in the liters per second, okay? So airway resistance is what we call this. Airway resistance, the formula is PIP minus plat divided by flow in liters per second. Now, a natural airway, my airway right now, that normal value is 0.6 to 2.4 centimeters of water per liter per second. Now, if a person is intubated, if they have an ET tube in place or a tracheostomy tube, that tube is smaller than our natural airway. So it is not uncommon to see the airway resistance be above normal in an intubated or trached patient. So sometimes that value can get as high as 10 or 12, maybe even 15 according to some references without you worrying. I will tell you, if you calculate your airway resistance on a patient on mechanical ventilation that has an artificial airway in place, at about 10 centimeters of water pressure, you need to start investigating to see if they have any airway resistance problems that you can minimize. All right, but it is natural for this to be higher than the absolute normal, which is the natural airway. All right, so let's back up just a little bit. You do an event check. All right, two important pressures that you need are PIP and PLAT. These two pressures have to be obtained on the same machine breath. The vent has to be pushing a tidal volume in. You incorporate an inspiratory pause, you get a PIP and a PLAT. PIP must be higher than PLAT. So, if you see that the difference between the two is huge, that means the peak inspiratory pressure has risen and the plateau pressure has stayed the same. That means there is a problem in the airway. But gradually over time, if the PIP and PLAT are relatively close together and the PLAT is rising, it will push the PIP up in the same incremental value. So if PIP and PLAT are rising together, the problem is in the airway. So the MBRC is going to ask about it is in relationship to the pressures themselves. You know, are they rising together? Is one rising? Is the PIP rising higher than the PLAT by itself? They may ask relationship questions. But they, almost, they also can ask this according to compliances. So you absolutely have to remember that dynamic compliance tells us that there is a problem somewhere. If you calculate dynamic compliance and it's lower than 30, there is a problem. But you don't know whether it is in the airway or the alveoli. You don't start knowing which is which until you, you calculate the static compliance. If the static compliance is lower than 60, you've got an alveolar issue, all right? But if your static compliance is normal, you then calculate your airway resistance. And if the airway resistance is higher than 2.4 or is rising over time, PIP mean, it means PIP and PLAT, PIP is rising higher than PLAT, that means the problem is in the airway. So, Peak inspiratory pressure and dynamic compliance just tells us if there's a problem. So what we really need are the plateau pressures to calculate the static compliance. And then we need to look at the difference between the PIP and the PLAT to be able to calculate airway resistance. Okay, so this is just an overview so you can kind of have an idea of where the lecture is heading. With the lectures, we're going to separate compliance and we're really going to talk about lung compliance, static compliance really is what we're talking about. Um, and we'll catch a few little minute details that the MBRC likes to be tricky about and then we'll move into airway resistance. So see you soon.